What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of This Garden Build. So it's another beautiful day out. It's 79 degrees today. I'm sporting my shorts and t-shirt. Getting ready to get going on our post over here. What I'd like to get done right now is I have a string line up and I'm gonna start marking the distance that my actual fence is from the ground up. And um, I'm starting off of my far corner and I'm gonna measure up 49 inches. Our actual fence is 48 inches, but I wanna leave a little bit of a post sticking up. So if I wanna put a post cap or a light or something like that, a little architectural detail to make something look nice. Um, so I'm gonna leave an extra inch, marking everything at 49 inches, and I'm gonna put my string line up, and um, I have a little, like a little level, a string level they put on, and um, I'm just hitting that line, that string line with a pencil. I'll get you turned around and I'll show you now. All right, so there's our string line level. I went ahead and marked it with red pencil right behind the string. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on every one of these posts so I have the exact same height all the way around the garden. All right, so we've went ahead and marked all of our posts at the correct height to be cut. The last one, you can see the elevation change really changes a lot from over there. But more interestingly, I'm not too sure what to do this elevation change is really drastic. So that one's being cut almost halfway at 48 or actually 49 inches, excuse me. By the time it comes over here, I just made it with that post right to the top. So, I mean, you're talking about from there to there. I mean, that's nuts. So I'm not too sure what I want to do going this way. Now, I got to back up just to get that in the frame. So. You know, from there to there is quite a distance. I put my 48 inch fence, it's gonna stop right about there. I still have about 32 inches uh, to the bottom. So, um, I don't know if I'm gonna try to make a 32 inch raised bed. It seems kind of high. Or if I'm going to maybe just keep a 26 and a half inch or 24 inch raised bed like I planned and then just put a little extra fence at the bottom. I don't know. Also, the span between my lean-to and this first post is greater than the rest of them. Um, I'm not entirely sure why I did that, but I keep having this feeling like I should put a gate here. I don't know why. I can't come up with a logical reason why I need one there. I know I need a gate, obviously, to get in and out of the garden. And we'll have the front gate, which will be a small man gate, but the front is also going to be a kind of a removable section. I'm going to have T-posts with pickets attached to it. So, I mean, I have plenty of room to get in and out from the front of the property. So. I'm not sure why I want to put a gate here, but something is just telling me that it's a good move. This is almost a 10 foot span. It's like nine, nine and a half feet. Um, I don't know, let me know what your thoughts are. I mean, maybe being able to bring stuff into the washing stuff, I don't know. I, I don't know why I want to put a gate there so bad. I, I can't really find a logical reason for it, but it's, something's telling me to do it. So what we're doing now is going around and cutting our tops off all the way around. And then we had our first major screw up on this corner post. All right, so this corner post, um, when I dug the hole, I put it down about two feet in the ground. Um, it was actually too short. To, and I didn't realize the elevation change from here to here is so drastic. It doesn't look like it by eye, but um, it was down two feet and then I was short about four and three quarter inches on this. So um, we had to go get, I had to pull the post out of the hole that I dug, tamped it all down nice. That was kind of a struggle and we had to put a longer post in its place. So lessons learned. All right, now that we got all of our, you know, vertical posts put in, I'm gonna start putting up horizontal posts along the top so that we have something to nail our fencing to. Not just the uprights, but if we have support across the top, it'll make the fence nice and taut. We can get it nice and straight. So I think I'm gonna get some uh, pressure treated two by fours going and then go right across the top. All right, so there goes our first one installed. Kind of important too, because this is that space that I was talking about where I felt like there should be a gate. Um, of course, we're gonna need support that way if we're gonna hang a gate on it. Um, I, again, I don't know why. I called my wife out here to get her opinion on it. And she's like, I don't know why I feel like there should be a gate there. She said the same exact thing. Um, I don't know, she had a good point. She's like, even if, you know, we have a little road behind the shed that comes up this way. She's like, even if you wanna bring your truck down and bring compost in or something, it's just, it'd be nice to have kind of a back door to everything instead of just ruining you know the front and going through the front every time I want to do something and taking that fence down so I think we're going to hang a gate here um that'll be another episode 
but um, I gotta figure out if I wanna build a gate or buy a gate or what, but I, I'm definitely gonna put a gate here. All right, guys, so it's a new day and we're gonna continue on with putting up our horizontal bracing along the top and between our posts. So what I'm doing here is I'm marking an inch down as I did with the rest of them. And then I'm actually marking another three and a half inches down. I'm taking these little scrap blocks since I'm working by myself. And I'm going to mount them right there. Or excuse me, right here. And I'm going to go ahead and set my two by four. Just so I have a little perch set it on top of it. I don't have anyone to hold it uh, on one end. So I tried a couple by myself and it's kind of difficult. So I'm just going to temporarily mount these in position. So I have a little perch for my two by fours. All right, so the new plan is I got my son helping me. He just kind of leans up on one post, holds the board with his hands, and that kind of sandwiches the board in between both of them. And I was able to zip him in really quick that way. I was struggling with the other ones for a minute, but this is this system's working out much better. All right, so Tyler's just pushing on the post, holding it nice and tight. I don't need another hand on the board, and we just zip him in. Alright guys, that's our last horizontal. Um, I think what we're going to do next is we should probably go and stain all this. I, I was my intention to stain this anyway just because I'm not too crazy about the yellow green look of the pressure treated wood. And I'd like to keep it protected for you know a good while so it lasts. So I think what we should do um, in the next part of this video is go get some stain. We'll get some foam rollers or something and uh, we'll get going staining this all up because you know, I, I don't want to attach the, the wire fence to everything before it's stained, obviously. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're staining it, and then we're going to go. Remember, I said I wanted to um, fasten these braces with lag bolts. So I guess before we stain that, too, I, that should be the next thing I do is we'll, we'll, we'll countersink these holes, get some lag bolts going in there, or lag screws, rather, and sure all this up. Um, I do want to get at least one more rafter in the meantime on the end here so I could solidify that side make it stronger um, remember we're gonna be putting a gate over here i decided so i might even do like farm fence bracing do some wire uh on, on that corner just to give it some some more rigidity because it's gonna be able to hold the gate um, i think i'm probably gonna suspend the gate off of this side but it'll just latch on this side but still it should be a little bit stronger um so that's probably what we're gonna do countersting some holes get some lag screws going get another rafter up there and then start staining everything and then uh, it'll be time to hang some fence. Truthfully, this is gonna have a um, raised bed in the corner, an L-shaped raised bed. So with you know more wood going across there on the bottom, more wood going across there, and it's gonna come out two feet with more wood. So it'll probably be stout enough with just that extra wood being on there and then the, the weight of the soil that I'm gonna be adding to the raised beds. But it really couldn't hurt to put some wire bracing anyway, just to shore everything up. So I'm gonna start chamfering out and kind of sinking some holes uh, right here for our lag screws to give this some more strength and rigidity. Um, also, I kind of want to go, I have this jar of stain out right now, so I kind of want to go ahead and uh, start pre-staining these things, these spaces so that I can get my bolts in. drill bit that is slightly smaller than the lag screw itself that we're going to use and drill the pilot hole so it's going a little bit easier. Everything's all pre-drilled out. We're gonna go ahead and stain up these holes. Um, well, pre-stain them so we can get our black screws sunk. All 
right, guys, we're back on this garden fence project again today. What I'm gonna be doing is I did wind up going to um, my farm store and I picked up some cable bracing for the corners of this fence. But before I get that installed on there, um, I, I you know I'm gonna wind up staining this whole lean-to in garden, um, the same color that we did the trim on our chicken coop, which is this product. It's a bare uh, transparent wood finish and it's a cedar natural tone color. I really like the way it looked. Um, so I'm probably gonna do this whole area and seal cedar natural tone using this product but i want to get it on the wood before i want to put in the metal bracing the wire on there because once that gets tightened up i'm not going to be able to you know get the, the stain in there adequately i have to wind up you know squeezing it on real hard and it's going to blotch up and just not look good so i'm just going to stain the parts where the wire is going to be for right now so guys i'm just using the foam brush to put this on i'm just doing the lower part of the post here because uh, you always want to do put your bracing at the lowest point on the corner post, and then it's going to go up. And so I'm going to wind up stained in that part, the top part of that post over there, and the bottom part of this post here. All right, so we got our corners all stained up. We're going to go ahead and start uh, getting our wire set up and our fencing material set up and start uh, tightening up some corner bracing wire. All right, so what we've got set up here is called a ratchet strainer. We just got our high tension wire around the bottom of our corner posts and the top of this last post. You snake your wire through here, you tie it off at the end and you just tighten down on this buckle. They have a uh, this tool actually that I have um, that locks onto this. It's kind of like a fork that you can ratchet it when it gets tight. I'll show you that in a second. So this is a pretty simple tool. It's notched in both ends here. It slips over the end sticking out and then this bolt comes down and catches those kind of sprockets on that, uh, on that ratchet right there. So all you gotta do is cr crank it down and it takes uh, a lot of the hard work off your fingers. All right, guys, what we ended up doing was changing plans again. I went up putting two actually in an X pattern. I put the one on, um, it made it nice and tight, but it kind of was pulling, I felt it was pulling on the post a little bit too much. It's starting to make it lean a little bit. And remember, these are only down two feet in the ground, so I couldn't really monkey tighten down on it too much. So I put one on the other side and then tightened them both up equally. And now this is rock solid. I don't know if this is what you'd call standard procedure or orthodox to do it in an X pattern, but the amount of rigidity it gave it, it just, I, I felt really happy with that because mainly, you know, like I said, I'm going to have a gate right here. And while I'm going to suspend the gate off of this post, which will be, you know, tied into the house with a rafter and then it's two feet in the ground over here. I'm not too worried about it, you know, this side moving, but just having it slam closed and, and you know, on this post often, I just wanted that to be extra solid. So. I was gonna put one in that corner. I think I'm not gonna do it now. That feels pretty good. Um, it's gonna be attached to um, wood across the bottom there as well. And there might be a little bit of wood coming out this way across the front. So I think I'm gonna leave that one alone for right now and just see how it works out when I put a fence on it. But for right now, just by put two in an X pattern here and it's it's great. It's nice and solid. I'm happy with the way it turned out. Now I know some people probably don't like this style of, of strainer or fence tensioner and that's fine. Um, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do this. Um, I happen to like these because they're just very easy to loosen and when you have seasonal expansion and contraction, you know, you get heat and cold in the winter and the summer, you will have to adjust these from time to time. You'll have to adjust most fence wire from time to time. Ground can heave, posts can move, metal even expands and contracts. So, you know, to loosen these is really very, very simple. You, you put that fork in it, that tool, you do a half a crank just so that there's a flap that holds the ratchet in place, moves. As soon as it's free, you just hold it down with a with a, a not your pocket knife or a screwdriver and it loosens right up it's just super super easy to loosen super easy to tighten they're inexpensive i think they're about 3.99 a piece and they hold tight so i like these just for the flexibility of being able to tighten them and loosen them whenever i want i've seen people use cables um and what they call a turnbuckle that works too uh they basically put like an eye bolt through each side and then a washer and then you have a turnbuckle in the middle which is basically like kind of like a double-ended nut for anyone who doesn't know what it means and there's two threaded pieces on each end. You just tighten that and it pulls everything together. That works fine. Um, a lot of you are here um, because Evan from Country View Acres mentioned me. Uh, you guys follow his channel. He uses a tool called a, a gripple and it's a gripple ratcheting tool. Really, really neat tool. That seems to work great. Um, I don't have one of those, so I just went with the uh, old fashioned method here. But um, that's a tool that I might like to add to the arsenals because the, um, the actual pieces that hold the wire together, the actual gripple itself, is very, very small and like unobtrusive. So I can see that being really handy when you're doing fence and you have like woven wire or welded wire fence up against it. You know, these are kind of big and clunky 
don't think it's going to be an issue but if you're doing a bunch of fence i could see that those gripples might just they might not look as bad either just have them because they're real small you know they're about that big so that's something i might want to consider getting in the future but for now these are just fine you could use the gripple you could use the turnbuckles as long as you hold that fence tight together and brace it up here that's really what matters in the end so while i was doing that my wife was over here in the corner planting some stuff in front of the shed let's go take a look and see what she's got going on so it looks like she's got a rose bush planted here and that's a lavender so i think yep she's got two more of the exact same thing sitting right here <laughs> So we are all stained up. Not sure if I want to stain the rafters yet or not. I found these solar lights uh, on sale at the local hardware store. They weren't too expensive, so I bought them. But that's what look kind of nice. Finished. I was going to put regular post caps on it, but these will look really nice. Just give a little bit of ambience. So I'm super happy with how this is turning out so far. Um, tonight when we come out, when these uh, when these lights come on, when it gets dark, we'll film a little bit of that and see what it looks like. But uh, I don't know guys, I'm liking it. We gotta get ourselves uh, our air tank set up. So we can come out here and start stapling up our fence. And um, we're pushing towards uh, the third week in March now. So I gotta get this ground tilled up, get ready for some compost and some dirt. Start putting stuff in the ground. It's crunch time. Well guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I wanna thank you all so much for sticking around. I know this is a long one and uh, hanging out with me while I took care of this fence project. We're getting there. Um, and super kudos to you guys who stuck around this long away to the end. That really means a lot to us, so thank you. Um, we'll catch you on the next video. We're gonna get this fence stapled up and hopefully uh, meet our deadline of getting plants in the ground. So um, thanks again, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Be good.